from the 2016 Ohioana Book Festival. This is Craft. I'm Doug Dangler, and I am here today with John Hegenberger, and he is the author of multiple books that we will talk about today, some of them set in the 1940s, and some of them set in the future, right? I write science fiction, that's the future, and you're right, the mysteries take place back in the past. Okay, so tell me how you got into this writing. What led to uh, this wide breadth of different kinds of content? Well, at my age, I've had many, many years of watching a lot of television and reading a lot of books and going to a lot of movies. So uh, with all that time, I've been able to look at uh, a lot of westerns and look at a lot of uh, space stories and a lot of mysteries, and I like them all. So okay. I decided to try my hand at uh, not just one, but what the heck, let's try them well, all. Let's do them all. Yeah. Okay. So uh, tell me about The Last Martian Chronicles, for example. That's one of your sci-fi books, I'm <laughs> okay. assuming. That's not going to be a uh, 1940s. No, it's not. Uh, although all of the books are sort of linked together. There's at least one character or some reference in each of the books that connects you to the rest of the books. You don't need to read them all to be able to get the fun, mm -hmm. but like an Easter egg, uh, you, if you do read them all, you can sit down and say, wait a minute, that must be the grandfather of the guy uh, back in the 40s in the murder right. mystery kind of a thing. So like Kilgore Trout was for, uh, for Kurt Vonnegut showing up in multiple texts yeah. and yeah. connecting. I always like the idea that I, what our author is working on isn't maybe just one work of art, but a tapestry okay. uh, or a long saga, and many, many of those have been big success, so I thought, let's see what we can do, and it's been a lot of fun. Okay. It, so what's your process for writing the books? When you sit down, you say, um, you know, I'm working on this, and I want it to be a, a thriller, I want it to be a sci-fi, and how do you get started on, on the book? Well, it always starts with something that struck me as being, oh, that's a great idea for a story. Um, and I'm not limited by saying it's just a sci-fi idea or a murder mystery kind of a thing. It's just something that I said, wow, I really like that. I'm going to want to put that in a book or spin it some other way. Or I always wanted to see so-and-so in this uh, television show uh, actually commit a crime. Like, Imagine if Jessica Fletcher actually, you know, murdered someone. That would be a hell of an episode. <laughs> Did you write a book on no, that? No, no. Because I would I'm like to see. I'm just giving you yeah. this off the top of my head. I just assumed that she was actually killing all but the people. I, but I will make some notes. You know? Right, yeah. <laughs> she was Jessica Fletcher, a murderer. Um, so you grew up in Columbus, Ohio, Correct. right? Are any of your books set there? Is that ever going to be a setting for? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. One of the series that I write is about a PI, private eye here in Columbus, okay. uh, and those books all feature a character I created called Elliot Cross. Okay. So the titles of those books all fit in with that. Cross Examinations, uh, Crossfire, um, Triple Cross. Okay. Um, I like the character and I like Columbus and I probably 20 years ago, I read a book about a PI in Cincinnati and it still is going on, as I recall, the, mm -hmm. the series. Uh, but it struck me right at the moment. I said, oh, I ought to be able to do that in Columbus. I wonder if, has anybody ever done that in Columbus? Mm -hmm. Couldn't find anybody that really had. So I said, well, that's, that's an area I think I want to nail down someday. Okay. So when the opportunity came, yeah, I decided to tell tales about our city. So my PI lives in the Levesque Tower. That's where his offices are, I'm sorry. He lives actually in an apartment in the old uh, Hustler building off of Gay Street, where uh, Larry Flint used to have his offices. Okay. Uh, the stories are set in 1988, so... Um, was that, uh, was, was Hustler operating was gone in the city? Then. Okay. It was gone by then. However, the taint or the remembrance of it all was still very fresh in 1988. And 88 also gives me an opportunity to kind of sidestep away from cell phones and DNA analysis. Mm -hmm. And I can have a PI doing what, traditionally, what, what you would expect a private eye to do. What kind of, re you, you talked about sort of absorbing things throughout the year. Did you do mm. more research uh, into what it's like to be a private investigator, which I imagine is probably quite a bit different than the way it's portrayed in, say, uh, some popular culture? Un poco, just a little bit. <laughs> I know that's, that's arrogant, but uh, everything that I do with my Private Eye series, all three of them, uh, is based on other previous literary Private Eye series. Okay. So I learned from reading things like Robert B. Parker's Spencer novels mm -hmm. or Dashiell Hammett. Uh, in fact, the, the Hollywood Private Eye back in 1959, his name is Stan Wade, which is real close to Sam Spade. Mm. So okay. those 
an homage. Reson yes, of the homage or the resonances of the previous. So it's a literary history and research that I do more than anything else. Okay. So when you go to write, um, when you've written something like uh, The Last Martian, the, chroni sorry, yeah. the Last Martian Chronicles, right. what, uh, when you're looking to the future, what are some of the trends you like to extrapolate on and say, this is how I think we'll get to Mars, or this is what I'd like to see science do? Oh, okay. Well, there's such a thing as a space elevator. I don't know if you know of it, but if it's possible for you to take, uh, well, let's say the space station that's in orbit, geosynchronous around the Earth, mm -hmm. if you were able to drop down, straight down a plum, a string, mm -hmm. okay? Um, if you think about it, if you attach maybe a thicker, harder cable to the string and dropped it and pulled, and then finally had a nice big hauser rope Eventually, what you might be able to do is, if it were physically possible, you could climb up into outer space. Mm -hmm. Well, the space elevator concept is based on that alone. If you were able to construct such a, a device, building layer upon layer, thicker upon thicker, you could literally have a conveyor belt going up and down and up and down, mm -hmm. taking things up, bringing things down, and that would be your, your space station. So I can see that as a very strong, strong possibility. Okay. And it's predicted by several other writers who, uh, well, for the past 30 years, so have played it, with the concept. It figures in your book then? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You had talked about having this you know, interest in the literary background to the mm -hmm. genre. Mm -hmm. um, do you also get to exchange with other authors and say, hey, that's an interesting bend? Or? No. Okay, so you're, <laughs> you're alone. Okay, so tell me about your, your, your process. When you sit down, uh, uh, do you have a certain number of words you want to do at a time? Is there a specific right. time you write? Um, how does that work for you? Well, uh, it averages out to approximately four pages a day. Sure. Uh, some days that I do what I call speed writing, which is um, I've already kind of outlined in my head what I want the story to be about mm -hmm. or where I am in the novel. Um, but rather than get bogged down with the specifics of this particular scene, because I know the following scene is even more exciting, I sit down and I just say, just start writing, just write. And I might get 30 or 40 pages in a day that way. Now they're very crude, they're very rough, but they don't take too much trouble to, have to be polished. Mm -hmm. uh, and it moves the story quite along nicely as opposed to maybe what other writers call writer's block. I don't have writer's block. Maybe mm -hmm. that's, that's part of the reason. Okay. So what other things do you have in the future? What's the next thing in the pipeline? Ah, um, well. Uh, in about a week, there'll be another science fiction collection out called Ice Slinger. Okay. In this case, we're talking about being out on uh, Ganymede uh, and uh, Moon of Jupiter and uh, sculpting out ice, mechanically slinging it in a catapult out because Ganymede's uh, gravity well is so slight. Mm -hmm. Then the ice can then be ported over to places like, let's say, Mars, and we can terraform Mars. So now we're in, let's say, year 2250, and this is happening. Corporations are the ones that are obviously that are running these operations, but there's some political and some corporate corruption going on, and lots of adventure out in outer space with all that, that mm -hmm. weird stuff going on. So that's, uh, that's in about a week, the Ice Slinger comes out. Um, middle of July, my first Western. Oh, a new uh, genre? Yes, mm -hmm. for me it's okay. a new genre, and uh, it was a struggle. Um, I had never thought about it. I, I think this is, this is a good story I'll, I'll share with you. The idea is that I may have seen thousands of cowboy movies and TV shows, okay, but I never really read a lot of westerns for some reason. So suddenly I couldn't use a car, I had to use a horse. Well, if you use a horse, then you've got to deal with a saddle. You've got to have a stable. You've got to feed the animal. I couldn't use uh, the automatic, uh, I'd have to use a revolver, which you have to reload. Okay, so that's different. Uh, you have to wear a hat, okay? Um, does that have to be strapped down? I mean, all these little details, suddenly I found myself going, I never thought about any of this mm -hmm. stuff before. So it was a really exciting, challenging, and refreshing opportunity for me to be able to write the Western. So you go write, you come downstairs, and you say, now I gotta take care of a horse. Mm -hmm. I've written myself into yeah. having to feed it, right. water it, right. and all these sorts of things. That I can't a, call anybody. There's no phones. phones. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? Now, if I want to get from Laramie to Cheyenne, well, that's a week. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so this, what are we doing for this week while he's traveling? There's no story happening. Right. So really an interesting idea that you, you switch over to another genre like that. Mm -hmm. Never never occurred to me. All right. Well, John Hagenberger, thank you very much Thanks. for talking to me today on Craft. And again, we've got all the books uh, here. Skyfall, mm -hmm. Starfall, Spadefall, Triple Cross, and, and uh, many other uh, novels. Thank so you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And a pleasure meeting you.